Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today, if we could save time in a bottle, the first thing that we'd like to do is to sit down to watch the Viper playing as the Hindu Stannies in yellow take on Hera playing as the Franks in blue. Now, while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with adorable Instagrammable sheep with their little pretty blue and yellow bandanas and try to get their butts up to feudal age as fast as possible, let's take a look at the Civ matchup we will be watching today. Now, the Hindustanis are a civilization that pushes its players towards an army comp made up of gunpowder and camel units. To start with, all Hindustani gunpowder units come with extra armor, and their hand cannoneers can be upgraded in one of my favorite unique upgrades in the game, Shatagni, to get plus two extra range. Now, Hindustani camels also come with a few cool features. To start with, they do come with a nice little attack bonus against buildings, which addresses my main concern with camels, which is that they, or I should say one of my main concerns, if you watch this channel, you know I'm not a massive fan of the camel units. They just absolutely suck at destroying buildings. This does help with that. Second, they do attack 20% faster. And lastly, the Hindustanis have access to the Imperial Camel Rider. This is a fairly strong, very tanky, super fast upgraded version of the already super duper awesome heavy Camel Rider. In order to defend your hand cannoneers from pesky, annoying ranged units that might want to snipe them on the battlefield, the Hindustanis can field a second unique unit, the Ghulam. This is an anti-archer infantry unit that moves quickly, has high pierce armor and attack bonus against archers, and whose spear can actually injure multiple units at once. Now, to support the quick production of their expensive army, and it is expensive, Hindustani villagers become progressively cheaper as the game goes on. They actually start the game being 5% cheaper and then end the game in Imperial if we're lucky enough to get to Imperial at 20% cheaper. And the Hindustani economy can be upgraded to be very, very efficient by increasing the speed of all gold income by 10% and reducing the market commodity trading free from the standard original 30 to 10% as well, making it the second best in the game behind, of course, the Saracens. Now, pivoting to the eastern portion of, uh, what do we want to call this? The Mississippi? Does the Nile ever freeze over? I don't know. I don't know uh, if the Nile has ever necessarily frozen over. So we'll call it the Mississippi, because I'm sure there's been some good winters along the Mississippi River. Anyway, <laughs> on the east bank of the Mississippi, we've got Hera playing as the Franks, the OG cavalry civilization. Their knights come with extra line of sight, their stables can be upgraded to work much faster, and all of their mounted units get extra HP starting in Feudal Age. But to support their heavy cavalry on the battlefield against pesky, annoying things like halberdiers and even camels, he says, knowingly, unknowingly, uh, questioningly, <laughs> the Franks can turn to their unique unit, the Throwing Axeman, which is a ranged infantry unit that, as you guessed it, throws axes, and whose range can be upgraded with a nice little boost. Now, to help a player produce as many throwing axemen as possible, Frankish Castle do cost less stone. Recently, uh, I want to say nerf, not a huge nerf, I don't think, but the long-standing 25% Frankish Castle discount has now been changed to 15% in Castle Age and 25% in Imperial. Now, to help feed a big, hungry, militaristic population, Frankish Foragers, you're looking at them work 15% faster, and they get all mill upgrades gratis for free. Those are the two civilizations we've got working for us. These are the two players who are here to entertain us. Our two gladiators for the day as an Ibex gets pushed into the Frankish camp. Not quite as stubborn as a deer, <laughs> I want to say. Hera researching Loom right before he clicks up the feudal viper doing literally the exact same thing. Clicking up uh, four seconds ahead of his opponent. Let's take a look at the map we're on as we saw. We're, we're going to go with the Mississippi theme here. We've got a frozen Mississippi. We've seen Valley before. That's the, I guess, the official name of the map, if you want to get all technical about it. Uh, we've seen this map recently with a lot of the new civilizations, the Armenians, the Georgians with their mule carts, an absolute, I, I want to say, destruction of nature, a decimation of the Ibex population, deer population, whatever happens to be on whatever version of valley it spawns but with those donkey carts holy moly can they plow through this uh animalia here in the center of the map speaking of center of the map let's take a look at where the viper has spawned town center nice and fat juicy town center we've got a big pile of gold uh 
well, let's call it the forward position, but easily walled off here. It looks like he's already starting with his houses, but choosing to place the barracks further away. Where, oh, where is his primary stone? It is off to the side on a very annoying hill, as is the secondary gold. I mean, this is very annoying. I guess you could place a town center here, but that would just be aesthetically unpleasing. Actually, can you place? This looks like elevation as well. I don't know that you necessarily have the tile space here to place a town center. But primary gold, forward position, primary stone annoyingly placed along the slope of a mountain. Hera has now discovered where his opponent is and will begin the usual strudel shape of a nice wide berth, followed by a, you know, looking at the inner gooey center. He discovers the second lumber camp he does. The Viper at the same time has discovered Hera's base. Hera's primary gold off to the side. Don't mind that at all. Primary stone and secondary stone very close to one another. Got a Hindustani Spearman uh, a little bit confused, thinking uh, he's on, I guess, the west side of the Mississippi. Additional gold here to the front for Hera. Additional gold to the south. One, two, three, four big fat corner forests help anchor this base. And it looks like Hera is definitely going to wall at least part of this base. I suspect he's ultimately going to wall all of it. But nice location for forests. Parties engaging in the center as they do. Let's take a quick look at where the Vipers forests are. Why do I feel like the Vipers forests are further away from his town center? Uh, base here I would give to Hera. You know, usually the bases are fairly equal. One ha player has a certain patch of resources that's further than the other. Another has forests that are closer to the other than the other. But in this case, I'd give it firmly to Hera. We'll see how much of a difference it makes as the first kill of the game. The Spearman melts into the snow along the banks of, you got it, the Mississippi. Here we go. Hera moving forward. Nine army count to four. He wants to uh, make a little dent in this army. He does not want to face Imperial Camel Riders. He does not want to face Hand Cannoneers with nine range. Uh, so he's putting on some good amount of early aggression. I mean, I suspect maybe he's just having fun. You never know. There are people who watch my videos who actually have seen some of these games live. And at the time, the players discuss, Hera discusses what he's going to do. The Viper discusses what they're going to do. I try, I try to watch as many content creators as I possibly can without trying, without getting spoilers. So for example, this game, I managed to catch as I was changing my baby, who, uh, you know, chose the loading time to make a nice little present for me in his diaper. But then the second I saw it was these two players, I immediately clicked out. I do not want to spoil it. But there are people who say, oh, you know what? This somebody gave a, a super chat or he gave, uh, I don't know, 500 bits or whatever it is on Twitch. And it has told Hera, hey, Hera, make only skirmishers this game. And Hera complied and neither wins or loses. But part of the fun of ranked ranked games, these are not tournaments. The pressure is lower, which means the players have fun. They get more creative. And that is part of the reason why I absolutely love ranked matches. Another kill for Hera. The first kill for the Viper, the Spearman as well. And here we go. More and more Feudal Age Micro. Hera is unrelenting, training another Spearman. The Viper going for his skirmishers. Does have the defender's advantage. They pop out literally right here. And join the battle immediately. And it actually looks like Blue is in a spot of trouble here. If the Viper can get rid of this one scout, all of a sudden these skirmishers are unsupported, at least temporarily. Another Spearman is making his way over. But we'll see if he gets there in time before a skirmisher dies. He does not. Another skirmisher passes. Oh, look at that. Fantastic micro out of the Viper. Fantastic micro out of Hera. As I've said a few times already, and I, I am nothing if not repetitive, I am in love with Feudal Age Micro. <laughs> it's so low stakes. It's so unimportant. I mean, what really rests on a few skirmishers? These five skirmishers are not enough to even five-shot a villager, let alone one-shot a villager. But man, oh man, when they fight each other, it is just absolutely epic. It looks like our Frank is really making an issue of it here. He came to play. I see three more reinforcing units. He is training more skirmishers, more spearmen. And they are all moving forward. Neither player banking any resources whatsoever. Although the Viper is going up to 250 food. Hera here, look at this. 
has to contend with a tower soon. So the Viper is going to try to secure this location. Says, enough's enough. I have had enough of this. Villager constructs a palisade gate as he's under attack. He is sacrificing himself for the greater Hindustani good here. But the Viper has walled his forward base. Ah, uh, partially? Partially? Oh my god, it's open here as well. Never mind. Never mind, silly, silly caster. The Viper hasn't walled anything. And he deletes the gate. So now he suspects he can hold it. Villager count identical. He's down half the army count, but again, defender's advantage. Hera fantastically mixing in these spearmen, knowing that they are the only thing that stand between his army and absolute wreckage from these uh, Hindustani scouts. But the watchtower is up, and now goodbye, Spearman. Will he even get one? Yeah, he gets one. Will he get a second? Oh, if only the weaker one was in the rear position. Ooh, that sounds a little dirty. If only that uh, one with lower HP was behind. That sounds just as dirty. <laughs> oh, man. In any event, Hera just loses one Spearman. Now he pivots north, says, you know what? Uh, I made an issue of the front of your base. Let me see if I can poke you over here to the top. The Viper here, four villagers pulled off the production line. He does not want to deal with any, but oh, 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 oh my God, this is open. Nope, it is no open no longer. But Hera will just pivot this way. And now let's see how the Viper decides to wall it off, opting to go, or rather opting to not go the longer route. He is creating a bit of a funnel. So the Viper in full emergency mode at the moment, his opponent doubling the army count, but look at the Viper. He's heading up to the next stage. This time, he's going to have a bit more than a four-second lead, it looks like. Hera still needs 100 food. Might want to just buy it at this point. No, never mind. He is not buying anything. The Viper. The Viper. He is almost out of wood. These wall-offs are costing him dearly. I mean, he's he's getting good amount of population space. He's going to finish this wall-off with about 50 extra population space. And he's now 30 seconds ahead of his opponent but down to villagers, neither player really making any kind of economic dent at the moment, both having lost zero villagers. It looks like the Vipers three scouts that we saw from earlier have tried to penetrate into this base and have failed miserably. I mean, there's a little little narrow isthmus of land here where I guess Hera could put his units very, very risky. And then he can absolutely push the viper off of this gold i mean this is a Hera has circled circled around he started here then he went north then he pivoted northwest then he went west then southwest finally he ends up in the southern portion of the viper's base and the viper just doesn't have anything to uh to deal with this except 700 stone he hasn't even hit castle h he already has stone so with that big fat defensive castle he is gonna absolutely shoo this away in the meantime, getting economic upgrades, upgrading his infantry. Doesn't have a single infantry unit on the map, but all the stone, all the infantry upgrades tell us it's very, very possible we're going to see Ghulams, especially when units like this are clumped, especially with their bonus against archer units and skirmishers, even though they have the name skirmisher, do have archer armor. I guess an archer class of armor, I should say. Whatever this house, by the way. You can't, you can't reach it? Now, for all the circling and running around, Hera's army is essentially impotent. I don't, I don't think he really expects longevity out of this army. He is transitioning to knights, Frankish knights. Forget bloodlines. You already come with 20 extra HP. Plus one, plus one on them. Was I right? Was I right? Let's click the castle. He's going Gulam. Okay. And it... <sighs> I mean, how do you how do you describe this decision by the Viper? I mean, first of all, what an absolute cool unit. And it, again, does inter, injure multiple units. It's a short-term solution, but there is no attack bonus against cavalry, which means that it is not a long-term solution to the Frankish spam of knights, and this spam it is with seven. But look at this, just two Ghulams absolutely wrecking that feudal age army. By the way, interestingly, the Viper is not stopping his stone mining. Another 190 stone, so he'll have enough stone for another castle once this patch runs out. This was not... Okay, so where will he place the second castle? Will he go defensive? 
Will he try to build up his eco, get up to those cheaper villagers? Will he cross the Mississippi? For now, he's moving out with his ghoulams. 12 kills. Man, the power of a Castle Age army versus a Feudal Age army, especially. Imagine having to deal with a Castle Age counter unit with your shitty Feudal Age army. That is exactly what happened to Hera over here. His knights finding no entry. But again, this area might want to put his castle here. Might want to wall this off. Knights circling to the north. The Ghulams are here in the front. They are going after the barracks. Probably the least important structure they should be going after, right? Why are you attacking the barracks? Just to make yourself known? What are the upgrades on them? Plus two armor, plus one attack. No attack bonus against cavalry. Oh, the knights busted in here. The viper, though. The viper does have enough stone for another castle. Looks like he did lose a stone miner. And now Hera is going to wreck these villagers. He manages to catch them here at the same time. These... Hindustani light cavalry units are pushing out. What is this? We're going to get to see an offensive castle. Hera, Hera, Hera. He's got seven knights. Four of them are here. Two of his light cavalry chasing. Look at the Viper leading him on a chase here. Fantastic play. But what does Hera have to defend? A few light cavalry units, some knights. I don't know about five ghoulams. Oh, he loses one to a conversion. Oh, he tries to place down the, ca the gate. Oh my god, the Viper is not able to, vi to to wall his villagers off. An uncharacteristic mistake here means he's going to lose all these villagers. No! How far is the castle? 25%. Do you cancel it at this point? You do have a secondary stone pile in the back. Oh. Well, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. We've seen this recently. One small mistake. The Viper playing... Look, I don't want to say perfectly at home. He's distracting these knights. He managed to kill one, lose a monk. He had a bunch of ghoulams. He's distracting the light cavalry here to the north. It looks like they did manage to catch the viper's cavalry. But here, I wonder if he should have placed his castle so cockily, so doubtfully. <laughs> Literally, in view of his opponent here, I mean, there was a monk. Actually, there still is a monk. Oh my god, look at this! Oh my god, kudos to Capture Age! I did not notice that they now included a conversion tab, and it's adorable, it's a crook. It's the little crook that the, uh, I guess it's not a little crook, it's a big crook, that the monk is holding. But now, yeah, I guess you can see how many conversions. Absolutely epic. Now, does it divide into economic? Yes, it does. Heresy as well. Wow. I mean, uh, what can you say about the people behind Capture Age just helping us content creators out significantly? Fantastic. Hera population is housed. The Viper population, half. Look at Hera's villager count. But as I was about to say... Viper, maybe a bit too cocky with this castle. I get that he wanted to get the, the stone. He wanted to possibly blame the gold. He does not want to deal with throwing axemen. He does not want to deal with the reinforcements. And this is literally in the face of his opponent. But was he a little bit too cocky? But as I said, we've seen it recently. Players make one mistake. And in this case, he didn't get that gate up. If he got that gate up, we would have absolutely seen an absolutely bonkers game. Not that this wasn't bonkers. But even when you make the right moves, even when you distract half of your opponent's cavalry force to the, your side of the map, your side of the you got it Mississippi, ultimately that lack of a gate, that failure to get that gate up. And by the way, he had an opportunity here, right? There was an opportunity here where initially he, he where these two light cavalry units, I feel like they went the other way. Yeah, like now, exactly. You have an opportunity here. You're being under, you're under attack, but a wall? You don't even need a gate. Just these two villagers is enough. I guess with monks here, never mind. Never mind. The monks change all the dynamics. What, what an absolute fun game, even though we didn't get to see Imperial. Oh, man. I wanted to see hand cannoneers. I wanted to see throwing axemen 203 APM for Hera. Very f not too far behind. Very close. Also very at similar points in the game. Uh, the uh, Actually, wait a second. <laughs> the old brain did the switcheroo. It's actually the Viper with the higher APM. Not some. Not every day you see Hera being in second place when it comes to APM economies. 
not exactly the biggest economies at the moment. Two relics to one, about 100 gold difference. All of the resources except for stone. I mean, look at this. Look at that fantastic, fantastic gathering of stone. Even though he and ultimately did, it looks like maybe a second villager died. We will have seen that in picture in picture. But this, this was a real shame here. And the Viper just is unable to get the castle up. I again wonder if this was just a little too aggressive out of the Viper. And I, I can already hear the, uh, the hate comments. Oh, he's not aggressive enough. He's uh, too aggressive. He's blah, blah, blah. As if I, you know have some kind of vested interest in making any comments but Hera sees the castle immediately uses his massive economically to start pumping out knights monks and is absolutely just absolutely squashes the viper's attempt here is it quashes or squashes I can I guess I can say both the attempt of the viper to get this castle up and even though the game didn't last very long man did we see some fun out of both players Hera Poking in the front, migrating all around, <laughs> literally all around the Viper's base till he got here. The Viper, though, cool as a cucumber, got the stone, got the castle, and then made, I guess, an attempt and failed and realized that now he's just, he's too far along. You, you can't cancel the castle when it's a third. You're only going to get back two thirds of your stone, which means you're not going to have enough stone for another castle and your villagers are dying and your army is gone. And you've got six ghoulams against 11 knights. So I think the Viper just realized this was just too big of a of a loss. Taps out. Hera wins this clash of the titans. But GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.